shadows Step out of the grave Break into the wild And don't be afraid Run into wide open spaces Places waiting for you
We, we should count it such an honor to be in the presence of a holy, almighty God. Someone that's, that has all power and all authority. And good to have William Strunk here and his son. Praise the Lord. When I used to drive school bus, he, uh, he was one of the kids on the bus. So, uh, so I'm glad he's here. Praise the Lord. And I never had no trouble out of him, as far as I remember. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, I'd like for you to turn with me into the book of Psalms 91. And we, uh, uh, we've been reading this for a long time. Uh, during the pandemic and uh, this psalm is one of the greatest psalms in in the Bible one of them you know and it was said by a German doctor that this psalm and that was a German doctor probably a hundred or so hundred a hundred and some years ago he said this this psalm is the greatest preservative of cholera, against cholera. Uh, and if you live by that, he, he talked about how strong and confidence you'll have in God. But I'm going to read this psalm uh, this morning. And uh, there's about 16 verses, and I'm going to speak from this. Beginning at verse 1, the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my refuge. He is my refuge and my fortress he's my God in him will I trust surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler which is the devil he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. A lot of, a lot of traps have been laid for you, but he has delivered you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler who is the truth Jesus Christ his truth shall be thy shield and buckler his promises what he has promised us uh, why don't you read it why don't you read about the promises of God? His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the air that flies, flieth by day, nor for the pestilent that walketh in darkness nor for destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Oh, glory to God. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, 
There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Ain't it wonderful serving God? When we serve God, there are so many good things that uh, what that song, uh, His goodness is running after me, pursuing after me. There shall no evil befall thee, and neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. We talk a lot about, oh, I've got a garden angel, which we do. But here it says he gives his angels charge over thee. to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he's known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him thank God I will be with him in trouble. I will be with him in trouble. Ain't that wonderful? I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Bow your heads one more time. Father of heaven, we thank you for the reading of your word this morning. We thank you for the worship. And uh, we thank you for your word that is so powerful. Lord God, that we can put our trust in you. And when we do put our trust in you and... We thank you for your goodness. Your mercies are new every single morning. Lord, we're, we're, we're just, we've got all confidence in you. And we pray blessings upon every heart this morning. And bless your word. Touch your people. Those that's not saved, save them. Those that's sick, heal them. Those that's in distress, relieve them and lift them up, Lord, because in you there's great peace and great confidence. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Sister Debbie, I pray that the Lord will just heal you. I pray that, that his power would touch you this morning in a way that you have never been touched before. Because God is always present. And uh, I want to use for my text this morning a thought like this. He's all I need. I don't regret giving my heart to to the Lord in 1968. I don't regret uh, a mile I've traveled for him. I don't re regret uh, a day uh, in all those years. He has been everything and more than everything that I needed. Uh, sometimes we think we need a 
this or we think we need that or something else. But he's all you need. If you've got Jesus Christ, you've got enough. Glory to God. There's nothing any greater than Jesus Christ and him crucified. Everything that you need, everything that I need, comes through and has been bought and paid for by the death and the suffering of Jesus Christ. And he has never failed me. Never failed me. In all those years, I have failed him many times, but he has never failed me. And here in the book of Psalms 91, this psalm is, is uh, the old Jewish people would read that psalm to their family every day. They would read that psalm because it's so powerful. And uh, during this pandemic, during what's going on in our world today, and even if there wasn't a pandemic, this psalm is still uh, necessary and is still powerful. Listen to what the Bible says. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dwelling in God's presence is a place of safety. It's a place of security. This psalm was written to those that lingers and stays in the presence of the Lord. I want to tell you something. There's, there's a great, great benefits for people living close to God, drawing near to the Lord, living in his presence. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, they are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. And thank God that we can be so close that we can live under his shadow, under his protection. Glory to God. I feel like God's keeping me. I do. I feel that God is keeping me. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen to what the psalms has said, and probably Moses wrote this psalm. Listen to what the Bible says here. I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. And my fortress. I don't know what you think about me, but I've got confidence in him. I don't know what's going to happen to me tomorrow. All I know is that God is in control of everything. And it says that I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Refuge. Where do you run when trouble comes? Who do you run to when trouble comes? He's my refuge. Glory to God. He's my fortress. Uh, Birds, when they are, oh my, when they are in trouble, I'm talking about birds that flies. <laughs> birds, when they are in trouble, I saw this, uh, I saw uh, uh, some time back um, 
a blue jay in my yard and a hawk was after it. And that blue jay just took off and went through the thickest branches of trees. What it was, that was its refuge. <laughs> and that's where it fled to, to be protected. Sometimes animals, when they are in danger, they'll run, in, they'll run to holes in the earth to, to, for refuge. <laughs> he is my refuge and my fortress. Let come what may. Let folks say what they want to. I've got confidence that the good Lord is taking good care of me. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe he's taking good care of you also. Look at you. You're here. Oh, you're here this morning. You're here worshiping God, singing praises to God, magnifying him. And he is good. His goodness endures to all generations. His mercy endures to all generations. So I'm just going to declare that he's my refuge. In all those years that I've served him, I've, I've kept running to him for refuge. You have too. Glory to God. The Bible tells us that some trust in horses and some in chariots. But I will remember the Lord God and I will put my trust in him. Glory to God. I've got confidence in who I believe in. So this morning, I want to tell you something. All I need is him, and all you really need is him. I know we need other things, but really the main thing, we need him. We need him. We need uh, we need his help. He gives me help. He gives you help. Glory to God. Oh, my. i tell you what, folks. Walls can't keep out pestilence. Glory to God. Walls just can't keep it out. Hallelujah. But God can. God can. Oh, glory to God. When the enemy uh, comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And I tell you what. As we read this psalm, as we come to worship God here at this place, just ask God to put a hedge about us, about this church. Oh, my. I believe it will take place. Oh, glory to God. What, did, what I read a few minutes ago, he shall give his angels charge over you. To keep you in all your ways. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. If you could see in the spirit, this place is surrounded by angels because you belong to God and you belong to him. The, this place is surrounded by angels. Glory to God. Oh, Brother David, you're weird. Let me tell you, sometimes people that are that, well, I ain't going to say, but sometimes we get kind of, I, I can't say the word eccentric. 
People, people thinks we're kind of something like that. And a lot of times it's people that thinks that they're, they're cold in their spirit. They have not been dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And they don't understand it. But what I'm preaching to you this morning is for you to have faith in Jesus Christ and in God Almighty. If he don't keep you, you're not going to be kept. If he's not going to bless you, you're not going to be blessed. He, if he's not going to give you good health, you're not going to have good health. If he's not going to keep you alive, you won't stay alive. But oh my, we're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And we're abiding, we're living under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen to what Psalms 90 or Psalm 61 verse 2 says. When David said, when my heart is overwhelmed. When my heart is overwhelmed. When when I can't hardly take it. When I can't understand it when I when I'm confused and and I don't know what to do when my heart is overwhelmed. He said, lead me to the rock that's higher than I am. There's a, there's a, there's a place of refuge. He's a rock. The, he's the shadow of a rock in a weary land. Lead me to that rock that is higher than I. And then verse 3 says, For thou hast been a shelter for me, and a strong tower from the enemy. Thou hast been a shelter for me, and a strong tower from the enemy. Let me read something in uh, Psalms uh, 27. Let me read. There's some good scriptures there. Psalms 27. Notice what the Bible says. The psalmist here says, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. I'm thankful that I'm not walking in darkness. There's a light all about me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. My deliverance. He's my salvation. I might go through something, but he's, he's going to deliver me. I believe that. Amen. He's my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Right now, I want to tell you something. Fear is gripping people. Fear. Now, I'm not saying that, that this uh, virus is not a real thing. It is a real thing, and it's, I believe it's demonic spirits with it. And, uh, but here, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I believe that we have to use all of our faith and all of our strength uh, just believing that God is still on the throne. Let me tell you, he's not going to sleep. 
He's not on vacation. He's not talking. He's not too busy. But the Bible says his eyes are over the righteous and his ears open to their cry. Yes, but his face is against them that, <clears throat> that does evil. So it lets me know that if we're righteous, he's watching out for us. And he's listening to our prayers. But if we're evil, his face is against them. And that's the reason folks need to be saved. Let me tell you, I don't want to go through life having God's face against me all my life. I need his blessings. I need his touch. I need his healing. So here the word of God says, the Lord is my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Oh, let me tell you. Sometimes we need to realize we're in his hands. We have to. If you don't, if you don't know that you're in the hands of God, you're going to always be afraid. You're going to always be scared to death. But that don't mean that things won't come your way. But that means that you're in the hollow of his hand. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Anybody feel strength? The Lord is the strength of my life. Let me tell you. When I preach, I don't, I hope I don't look like or act like I'm ever how old I am. <laughs> But Caleb and Joshua, the land, God had promised them the land. And Caleb, I believe it was Caleb that said, I am this day 80 and 6 years old. 86 years old. I'm still a little bit away from that. 80 and 6 years old, and my strength today, he said, is just as strong and great as the day they sent me out to battle. The Lord is my life and my strength. Oh, glory to God. Listen to what it says. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Yes. Glory to God. <coughs> He's my strength. Yes. He's the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Oh, glory to God. If you listen to if you listen to CNN, NSNBC, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> because all those liberal media, they're trembling in, in their shoes. They have no confidence in who God is. Oh, Lord. And they will try to make this all America scared to death of everything. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Mm. 
The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. <laughs> oh, glory of my life and of whom shall I be afraid? I don't like to hear a lot of negative stuff. Oh, glory. The reason a lot of people are afraid, they're not reading this. They're not uh, meditating on this. They're not staying in the secret place of the Most High. And they're trembling in their shoes. Brother David, you're beside yourself. I want to tell you something. There's faith and there's unbelief. Unbelief will destroy you. Faith will bring you through. I've got faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified. I might die tomorrow, but I'll die in the faith of Jesus Christ. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, my, my, my. Verse 2 here says, When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh. Even when they came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Why? Because... David said, the Lord's my light <laughs> and my salvation. Listen to what verse 3 says. Though a host should encamp against me. Though a host. I mean, that's a big crowd. That's, that's uh, kind of like uh, a crowd at a ball game. Though a, though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Ain't that wonderful to have confidence in God? Confidence in the Lord. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Oh, glory. <laughs> My heart shall not fear. Fred Sanford, <laughs> when he get all excited, oh, Elizabeth, I'm coming home. <laughs> Let me tell you, we don't have to be like that. Get that confidence in God. Believe that he will take good care of you. Woo! Glory to God. Though war should rise against me, in this I'll be confident. I want to tell you something. There's, there's folks afraid of the devil. Oh, yeah. The war should rise against me. David said, in this I'll be confident. Right. Glory to God. There's people that won't work for God because they're afraid of the devil. <laughs> afraid of what he'll do to them. I've had them tell me that. Well, I'd like to do something for God, but I'm afraid what the devil might do. You better be afraid of God. <laughs> you better honor and fear God of being disobedient unto his voice. Now, I'm not saying that... I, I'm not saying that I'm perfect or anything like that. I'm preaching to you something that'll build our faith, that'll help our confidence in God because he is real. God is eternally real. And he, he gave you strength this morning to wake up and come to church. It was because of him that you're here. It's not because uh, it, it's, it was just your, your goodness. God is the one that's keeping us alive. 
Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing, David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. He's all I need. David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. Listen to what he said. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I made up my mind in 1968 that I was going to live for God. I've had battles. I've had storms. I've had sickness. I had sickness in my family. I've had uh, a lot of different things that come my way. But let me tell you, through it all, through it all, he was all that I needed. He's the one that brought me through. And one day you're going to be able to say that too, you younger folks. One day you're going to be able to say, he brought me through that. He brought me through two, th he brought me through four, th he brought me through a bunch of things. <clears throat> one day, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell, live there, stay there in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I want you to know that all your life you can be a churchgoer, a worshiper, a lover of God. And if you'll do that, you're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, and you're dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord. I didn't come here this morning to see you. I didn't come here for you to see me. I came here to behold the beauty of the Lord. And I've been talking about the beauty of the Lord this morning. All the things that he's done for us. He's all that you need, church. He's all that you need. The devil will make you think that you need a lot of other things. But when I've got the Lord, when you've got the Lord, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Amen. That's true. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Glory to God in that secret place. Oh, my church, if you dwell in that secret place, you are in an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know about his plan and you know about his love and tender mercies. Verse 5. <clears throat> For in the time of trouble... Anybody here ever have trouble? Raise your hand if you ever had trouble. Look like everybody. <clears throat> For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Glory. He shall hide me in his pavilion in the time of trouble. What is the pavilion? Uh, pavilion? In the armies of Israel, the, the pavilion was right in the center uh, 
a place right in the center of all the soldiers. It was a place, it was a pavilion where the king stayed, surrounded by his army. Nobody could get to the king because they would have to fight their way through multiplied thousands and thousands of soldiers. Well, here the Bible says he'll hide us. Woo! Whoa! He'll hide us in his pavilion. Oh, my. Let me tell you, we are surrounded by the armies of heaven in that pavilion. By all the angels, he'll give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. (laughs) And when you're hid in his pavilion, he's there. He's not got you stuck in a closet somewhere trying to protect you. But he's there, and he puts you there, and his arm is around us. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide thee in his provision. In the secret of the tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above. My enemies. Say this is the enemies here, you know. My head will be lifted above them. Yeah. Glory to God. I will be looking down on my enemies. <laughs> Woo! My head shall be lifted above my enemies. Round about me. Oh, glory. And then it says, therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle, in this place, in his tabernacle, sacrifices of joy. Oh, glory. In other words, we're not saying all the time, woe is me. Oh, my, I'm having, woe is me, the devil's about to kill me. But we'll, because of what the Lord is to us, we will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. Oh, glory. That's the reason Brother John was dancing up and down. He, He had joy in his heart. Oh, glory. Offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. You've got a right to shout. You barely could come. You couldn't come to church not long ago. And when you did come, you came uh, just all bound over and, and in trouble. But you've got a right to shout because he brought you through. He was all you needed. He's all I need. He's all that you need. Oh, my, my, my. And now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. Glory to God. Sacrifices of joy. Do I seem happy? (laughs) What if I came in looking like a grouch? (laughs) 
Oh, Lord, would that build your faith? No. <laughs> It'll get you down. Therefore, will I offer in his sac uh, tabernacle sacrifices of joy, and I will sing. Listen to what it says. And I will sing praises unto the Lord. The praise of God is not to be silent. Somewhere along the road, we have to express it. Well, I can't sing. You can too. You can too. We might drown you out, but you can sing. Sacrifices of praise. You're not doing it for people anyhow. You're doing it unto the Lord. You want to please him. So this morning, the best thing that I ever did was turn my life over to Jesus Christ. He's all you need. If you're dealing with sin in your heart, if you're dealing with sin in your life, if you're dealing with uh, some kind of addiction. All you need is him. All you need is the blood of the cross that was spilled on Calvary. It wasn't just for um, you to get saved, but it keeps us saved. We're saved by his life. His life was poured out into us. So this morning, he's all you need. Amen. You might think, well, Brother David, I, I wish I had somebody to lay hands on me uh, to get rid of, uh, of this demon spirit or get rid of, of uh, depression. We do pray for people, and we do lay hands on people. But I want to tell you something. All you need is Jesus Christ. When my daughter Melissa was dying, and we took her to Brother Brock, and he said the very first thing, I can't heal you, Melissa, but Jesus can. He was letting us know that all we needed was him. Other people can help our faith and pray for us and Laying hands on people uh, is important. It's biblical. And uh, let me just throw something out. Good time since I got here where I'm at. Sometimes I think we need to let sisters lay hands on sisters Amen. and brothers on brothers. Is that okay? Oh, glory to God. And if you do feel led to lay brothers to lay hands on a sister, I have, I have been bothered down through the years seeing people uh, grab a sister's face. <laughs> if you're going to pray, all you have to do is just a touch. And you don't have to shake them to death. <laughs> I'm going to shake them till, you know, some folks, I'm going to shake them till they fall. I want them to fall. Well, they will fall. They might be falling to get away from you. <laughs> but let me tell you, there's a real anointing and a real power that Bible says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's all you have to do. Just a touch or just, just a touch. There's just as much 
power. Me laying hands on a brother or sister and one finger is grabbing them. Good preaching, Brother David. Glory to God. Let's all stand.